How's everyone doing? Today I'll be doing a random horror Blu-ray shelf video. Random horror Blu-ray shelf number one. I've done this before in the past and I've had a lot of people ask me to do this again. Uh, basically I have all of my horror Blu-rays in a bookcase right here and they're just not organized yet. They're just thrown on the shelves to get them off the floor. In fact, I still have a bunch on the floor and then some in the other room. So I'm still trying to go through trying to th thin down the collection as much as possible because I just don't have the room. But there you go. This is all horror Blu-rays right here. I've got some there, there, and a bunch in another room. And then I've got some, like right here, a bunch of these sets and stuff, and then there, there, and I'm gonna have to, I have enough to knock like that shelf and like half of that shelf too. Uh, and I kind of like the way that looks, so I don't really want to change that too much. Um, I might get another smaller shelf and put some of the box sets and stuff there, so that way I can put more horror Blu-rays and I don't really have to thin out too much more because I actually have thinned out a bunch. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it to uh, random horror Blu-ray shelf videos. Uh, I'm gonna try to do all of these coming up soon uh, by the end of the month, so look forward to that. And then once I do all this, the random videos, I'm gonna finally organize them and then do a complete horror Blu-ray collection video. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, and here is shelf number one. Let's go ahead and get into it. First off, we have a couple Scream Factory releases. First up is Animal which I really enjoyed, good uh, creature feature, although I think the ending could have been tweaked a little bit, but uh, still solid overall. Uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe, which is probably in my top 10 favorite horror movies of the past few years. Really enjoyed the heck out of this one. Just creepy and atmospheric and unique. Next up is Devil from M. Night Shyamalan. He did uh, the story for it, and I think he's a great storyteller. Uh, I think this was very simplistic, but it really works well. Devil's Candy, which is another one of my favorite modern horror movies, kind of a heavy metal horror movie, very dark. Um, I thought it was just amazing. I love the climax. I love how it all kind of comes together. And then uh, A Study in Terror, which this is another one that I thought was uh, really good and kind of underrated as well. Um, good cast in here too. Young Judy Dench in here, uh, kind of a mixture of um, Jack the Ripper meets uh, Sherlock Holmes, which is exactly what it is actually. <laughs> Uh, next up, The Bat, another good kind of uh, gothic horror. Annabelle Creation, I think I liked it a little bit more than Annabelle, but um, it I, I don't know, I feel like these movies could be better than they are, but still had its moments. Next up is 2359, a creepy uh, Chinese ghost movie revolving around like this military base and like a uh, urban legend, 1408. Uh, I really love the heck out of this one. Uh, I think uh, John Cusack, Samuel L. Jackson, the whole atmosphere of it, just everything really worked well. The storytelling, too. Uh, 28 Weeks Later, it's a bit derivative. Um, not as good as 28 Days Later, in my opinion, but uh, still really solid and more uh, kind of fast-paced action horror. But uh, definitely a really good one. Um, Aftermath, which... I. <laughs> I had another copy of this. This one's actually still sealed. I just noticed that now. Uh, but I enjoy this one for what it was. Uh, the cast right there. Um, like a post-apocalyptic one. And again, it's kind of, uh, you know, they're all taking shelter. And um, basically saying how, you know, man is uh, man's worst enemy. I feel like that's the case with a lot of these movies. Kind of remind me with Animal as well. That was uh, part of that too. Any kind of outbreak, post-apocalyptic event, any kind of one. Um, that's one of the cases. Anaconda, classic cheese right there. Uh, the ABCs of Death, uh, really good horror anthology. Um, again, it's a mixed bag for all these different ones, you know, VHS, ABCs of Death. But uh, I like a lot of the creative ideas. And even though I do say Anaconda is cheesy, it's still extremely entertaining for me. Abbott Costello, Meet Frankenstein. Uh, another classic one. I like all the old school Abbott Costello, Universal Monster ones. ATM. I, I really enjoy this one, but I wasn't a big fan of the ending. Babysitter Wanted. I think I'm the only person out there who enjoys this more than House of the Devil. Uh, it's very much like House of the Devil, except for me, way better. House of the Devil was just all style over substance. She's walking around that house for like 40 minutes, nothing happening. You could say it's, you know, build up. Uh, for me, it was just boring and the payoff was terrible. For this, Babysitter Wanted, there's actually things happening going on and the payoff was way better. Uh, but I feel like I'm the only one who feels that way. Tusk, which I call cinema absurd. Just crazy, ridiculous. Uh, I was able to get Kevin Smith's signature on the slipcover. Uh, Sleepwalkers. This is the uh, old edition of it. I know uh, Screen Factory is putting out an edition, but I was able to get this one signed up. Um, I thought this Blu-ray was, you know, decent. I, I don't know how different the transfer is going to be. 
Um, but I know Screen Factory likes to re-release a lot of movies, so uh, hopefully there will be some new special features and stuff like that on there to make it worth the purchase. Uh, House of on Sorority Row, which is one of my all-time favorite classic slashers. And we've got Creep Show, which is an all-time classic horror anthology. Let me know what your favorite segment of this one is. For me, it's The Crate. And I do plan on getting the Scream Factory release for it, um, just, I guess, for the, the special features, which I haven't even checked out to see what they are, but I imagine they're more than a uh, theatrical trailer, so there's that. <laughs> but I, guess, I think I'll put that down there for now because I definitely want to pick up the Scream Factory release for that one. Uh, next up is Bearing the X with Anton Yelchin. May he rest in peace. Alexandra Daddario uh, and Ashley Green, both very stunning. This is a Joe Dante one. Um, I like all the, the horror references in there. It's a horror, romance, comedic elements in there too. Afflicted, really good, uh, very underrated one as well. Um, found footage. I don't want to give too much away. It's a found footage horror movie. Um, I would recommend checking it out. It's kind of a unique idea. And I like it, and I feel like not enough people talk about it. Old School Carrie, this is the Comic Con 2013 uh, San Diego one edition, which I like it, very simplistic. And at the black cases too, the Babadook, Duke, Duke, Duke. This is with uh, the gatefold pop up slipcover, which to me is one of the coolest horror Blu ray slipcovers out there. Next up is Excision, which I absolutely love the heck out of this one. Annalyn McCord was just. A tour de force in this one. This is kind of like a psychosexual, um, dark comedy horror movie. I like the cast a lot. A lot of cameos in here. Uh, but oh, to me, this one just blew me away. Another one that I think is very underrated. Existence. This is more uh, sci-fi um, from uh, Cronenberg, but I really enjoy this one. I like the cast too. The video game aspect of it. Um, Exit Humanity. Very dramatically paced uh, Civil War uh, infection movie but I dig it. Exorcism of Emily Rose, another strong exorcism movie. Faculty, this is one I grew up on. Uh, Black Rock, which is another one that I don't hear people talk about. Um, these girls are going into this like, island and they see these hunters there and something happens and then they're hunted and it's a fight to survive. I like the cast a lot and it had some good tension. Next up, Basket Case, which I have the Arrow video release of this one too, so I guess I'll Get rid of that one now too, but I, I kind of do like these old something weird video releases. But Arrow Video is killing with their releases. Beetlejuice. This is the 20th anniversary deluxe edition with the soundtrack CD sampler with the lenticular slipcover. I remember this one going for like crazy money back in the day, but I was able to get that for a really good price. Next up is Be Deviled, one of my favorite horror movies out there. I love it. So underrated. A uh, great revenge movie. Just the, the tension, uh, just what she goes through, uh, and the payoff. Uh, amazing. Absolutely love this one. Um, I would highly recommend the heck out of this one. Great Korean horror revenge movie. Big Ass Spider. Um, the title pretty much explains what the movie is about. Just a big ass spider terrorizing the town. And uh, I got to do an interview with Ray Wise for this movie, which I thought was really cool. And I just had a lot of fun with that movie. If you like giant monster movies and giant bug movies, I think you'll dig it. Black Christmas, I know there's a, a Scream Factory release for this one, but I will probably pick that up eventually, but for now I'll hold on to that one. The Craft, which is another one that I remember watching a lot as a kid and thinking the chicks were hot in there. <laughs> um, next up is Crazy, this is the UK edition, uh, with a nice lenticular slipcover. A lot of times the UK uh, releases, uh, they get nicer uh, slipcovers and artwork and steelbooks and stuff like that. The only thing is I don't really like, first off, the rating logo. Um, but I don't like that the slip cover is like not a full slip cover. It's like doesn't go all the way to the top, which is kind of weird to me. But um, this is one of the few remakes that I think is actually better than the original. I definitely love Romero, but I think this one was definitely a step up. Very tense and thrilling, just awesome effects. Chain by Jennifer Lynch, really good female director. This is just a dark, gritty, dirty, nasty movie. And Vincent D'Onofrio was amazing. He's great in those dark kind of psycho movies. Next up is the Bogans. I say the Bogans, you know, you know, it looks like it's the Bogans because the there's a character in here, an old man at the end, and he says uh, the uh, Bogans instead of Bogans. But a uh, really good uh, creature feature movie. Love the heck out of that. Great cast chemistry in there too. I felt like that one's kind of underrated as well. And next up is Borderland and Crazy Eights After Dark Horror Fest double feature. 
Um, I wish these would have standalone releases. I don't like double feature ones. Borderlands is what I got this for. Uh, I think that one's another one that's really underrated. And I like the cast in here too. Ryder Strong. Uh, Brian Presley. There's a few other people in here. But for me, it's all about Sean Astin. He was great in that performance. Next up is Brotherhood. This is more of a thriller, but I put it in here because it is pretty dark. Uh, but another one I enjoy a lot, and I've really only heard like one other person ever talk about this movie. Uh, but it's basically about a fraternity uh, and something goes wrong. Um, again, very tense, and the, the ending was awesome. Uh, Case 39, which I feel like gets a bad rap, I think because a lot of people just didn't want to give it a chance or put it down because of the, the cast which was a, you know, Hollywood cast, Renee Zellweger, Bradley Cooper. Uh, but I thought it was really creepy and just a really good film that more people need to give a fair shot. Don't just, uh, you know, throw it out because it has uh, famous people in it. Big time Hollywood celebrities. Chillerama, which, oh man, this was so much fun. I love the heck out of this one. Um, let me know what your if you saw this, what your favorite segment from it was. But uh, Anne Frankenstein, um, Wadzilla, just everything about it was just... Uh, just so much fun for me. Um, th there's one segment I wasn't a big fan of, but every other one I, I really enjoyed. Conjuring with that awesome slipcover right there. Uh, it doesn't do anything new conceptually, but it's one of the best of its ilk. Uh, I didn't like the second one at all. I thought the second one was just too formulaic and just jump scares and cheap. Uh, I feel like I'm in the minority in that one, but I uh, love the first one. Cult of Chucky. Which, uh, it, it could have been better, but uh, I think a lot of people just crapped all over it. I still enjoyed it. Uh, Planet of the Vampires, Mario, directed by Mario Bava. Uh, reminds me of like an old uh, like Twilight Zone episode. Kind of a mixture of um, Star Trek. Uh, Seasoning House, which is another really dark, gritty one. More of a thriller, but um, it's dark enough where I could put it in there. But also kind of like a revenge story too and just kind of some of the atrocities of war involved in there and atrocities of things that happen to uh, young girls too um the houses october built love the concept for this one uh but the ending kind of let me down and the sequel was just garbage it's kind of a rehash and it kind of ruins this movie because it completely changes what happened and ah could have been so much better uh, i love the concept to it though next up we've got uh the lost boys classic right there the first sparkling vampires but uh uh just uh, one of the best vampire movies out there i grew up watching that one and then we've got uh lost boys the tribe which i remember hating this one i'm gonna give it another watch this is the uncut version i don't know if that will help it um i got all three of the lost boy movies um from one seller who was selling them. i have the third one in the other room because i haven't seen it yet and i'm gonna watch it soon and then last but not least is lovely molly uh, another one that I think is underrated that I don't hear enough people talk about. It is dramatically paced. I love the ending. It is just creeptastic, atmospheric, dark, uh, just haunting. I love the heck out of this movie. And uh, this is uh, directed by Eduardo Sanchez, uh, who did uh, Blair Witch. He also um, did Altered, which is another one that I think is underrated. doesn't have a Blu-ray release, but it's kind of a, an alien horror sci-fi and a couple comedic moments in there too, but uh, I like to alter it a lot too. But there you go, there is Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf number one. So there you go, that was Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf number one. Uh, let me know what you guys think of uh, the movies, uh, if you've seen any of them and what you think of them, and which one is your favorite from this Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf number one. And once I go through all the shelves, I will reorganize it and do a complete collection video for my horror Blu-rays. So look forward to that coming up soon. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.